Hi, this is Deb from Deb's Days. It's Tutorial Tuesday, and today we're going to make these cute little bunny rabbit candy pouches. The measurements in this video will make four candy pouches. Along with your regular sewing supplies, for this project you will need two pieces of plain fabric measuring 9.5 inches by 12 inches. I'm using muslin. One piece of freezer paper measuring 9.5 inches by 12 inches. If you haven't used freezer paper before, it's something nice to have for sewing. It comes in a roll and you can find it in the grocery store near the tin foil and cling wrap. Ribbon. I cut four pieces measuring 12 inches each. A printer. Some tape. Scissors or pinking shears. A piece of cardstock or plain paper, and the template downloaded from debstays.com. You can also find a written version of this supply list, the measurements, and the template on Deb's Days. I've added a direct link in the description right below this video. Debstays.com is also where you can find more free patterns, supply lists, and links to even more sewing and crafting videos. For this project, we'll be printing onto fabric. We don't need any special fabric to make it happen, we just need our plain fabric and some freezer paper. We first need to iron the freezer paper onto one of our pieces of fabric. It has a shiny side that can be ironed onto things. We're going to place the shiny side down on top of the right side of the plain fabric. Center it right down on top of that fabric. Now use your iron on high heat, but no steam and iron the freezer paper onto the fabric. It takes just a few seconds. Make sure it's secure. This is the piece we'll be feeding through the printer. We're going to leave that freezer paper on the fabric, don't peel it off yet, to help give it some stability as it goes through the printer. Now we need to cut down that freezer paper fabric piece to the standard eight and a half by 11 inches, like you'd find on a regular piece of paper. You can use a blank piece of paper to get the measurement or use your quilting rulers to trim off that extra. It's still a little flimsy for the printer, so I like to add a piece of cardstock or a blank piece of paper to give it a little bit more thickness. I use just a couple pieces of tape up at the top. Then it's computer time. Open up the downloaded template from Deb's Days so you can print that template directly onto the fabric. I like to use the matte photo paper setting. If you'd rather just use your standard printer setting, it won't be a problem. Place your freezer paper fabric and that piece of cardstock or blank paper, whatever you used, into the printer. Make sure you know which side your printer is going to print on. I have to turn mine upside down for it to print correctly on the printer. I like staying close to the printer as I print these, just in case they need a little bit of assistance going through. It's always a nice feeling when it starts coming out of the printer exactly the way I expected it would. I've never had any problems with the ink rubbing off, but you might want to just let the bunny faces sit for just a few minutes before handling them, just in case. Then go ahead and peel off the freezer paper. If you're making more pouches, hold on to that freezer paper. You can use it again. Center the printed bunnies on top of the wrong side of the other piece of fabric. We're going to take the entire piece to the sewing machine and stitch them. You can pin the two pieces of fabric together if you'd like, but I've found since there really aren't any layers, it's just those two pieces of fabric, that the pieces haven't shifted on me. But if you'd feel more comfortable pinning them together, go ahead. We're going to follow right over the top of those outside lines. I'm using black thread to go right over the top of those black lines. I need to leave a spot open to add the candy. The best place I've found to leave that opening is at the top between the ears. Now if I get my sewing too close to the bottom of the ear, it won't leave me enough room, so instead I'm going to go up a little higher on the ear to start. I'll start here, and I'll go all the way around the bunny face following that line. I'll go up the other side, down around the ear, but again not too close to the bottom of the ear. As you stitch, go slow around those curves and in those points. 
If you get off the line a bit, it'll be fine, but don't go wandering off the line too far. When you have all four stitched, we need to cut them apart. Here's where you'll need to decide whether you're going to use pinking shears or regular scissors. I'm going to do some both ways so you can see which way you like best. So go ahead and cut all of them apart from each other. I've uploaded a new template that should give you a little more space between the cutting lines. When you have all four cut out, go ahead and trim close around each bunny face, but not so close that you're cutting into the stitching. When those are cut, it's time to fill them. Open up the hole in the top and add your candies. You can stuff them in there firmly or stuff them in loosely. I didn't add any treats to the ear places, just to the face part. You have two options to close up the hole. You can do what I did with some of mine, which is just to take the pouch back to the machine and complete the circle by sewing a line from one side of the face to the other, just under the ears. Your other option is to tie your ribbon between the top of the head and the ears. If you go this way, center the ribbon piece there. Then go ahead and tie a bow or a knot. You may want to adjust the ears a bit. And then you have some cute little bunny rabbit faces that double as candy pouches. If you enjoyed this project, don't forget to like, share, and leave me a comment. If you'd like to see more craft projects like this one, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also stop by the blog at debsdays.com. You'll find free patterns, supply lists, and links to even more sewing and crafting videos. See you next week with another project.